milk, but you're not allowed to have milk straight after meat, that you have to wait six hours because there's a problem. The only place that it talks about that is in the oral Torah, which God gave to the Jewish people. It doesn't say that in the Bible, right? So let's say like you went to, you, you're going to your Seventh-day Adventist church right now, like in the old days, right? You wouldn't know any of this, right? You don't know this because you're working without the oral Torah, okay? The oral Torah was given at Sinai to Moses. That's what we celebrate tomorrow. And how are you celebrating it? Um, I think I might be getting set up. Wow. Yeah. With a woman? Yeah. Details or no? You, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just going to play it cool. I'm just going to play it on the down low. But okay. When was the last time uh, someone tried to set you up, invite you over for a Shabbat, a holiday meal, and set you up? With, with somebody? Yeah. Uh, somewhere around March or April of never. <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened. Hey, we're having a guest. Why don't you pull up? Everybody wants, you know, to meet you. I don't think that's ever happened. I mean, it probably did like 25 years ago or something, but I just don't have a memory of it offhand. I think that's fantastic. Is it a rabbi's daughter? I'm not for, sure. For, for God's sake, don't let her know about this show. I mean, like, whatever you do, do not tell her about this episode. And I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to get over my hatred of women. I don't think that's, like, a good thing. Yeah, it's he like, doesn't hate women. He just, he's just a blogger who'll say anything, you know? No, no I do, but I want to, I'm getting over it. I'm getting healed. I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm not evil. I'm just sick. And I'm on the path to recovery. See, it's, it's, uh, it's an illness. It's not... It's not anything else. It's an illness, and I need help, and I'm getting the help that I need through psychotherapy, through Alexander Technique, through uh, working the 12 steps, and through studying Torah with Rabbi Rabs. Oh, and, I, and I'm humbled by that. I am humbled by that. All right, so what's the next thing? My next topic that I wrote down to discuss is about, uh, about how Fermi's are, but if you want to you go into one of your topics, do you want to talk about Wiener right now? Sure. How about money? Shall we hit him up? All right. Let's hit him up for some from some cash. All right. Let's take a let, let, a now word from our sponsor. I got a hundred. I I uh, deposited. Don't tell me. Don't say how much D Medic gave me. Okay. Pay doesn't want that publicized. Um, I I deposited a check in my bank account today, and I found out I've got sixteen hundred dollars in my bank account. So, because I've got like a thousand dollars a month in credit card bills. Yeah. We'll see how. We'll see how, I mean, I don't want to but get you got two to, checks there. I got two checks, so I got $146. Okay, okay. now you just... Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, folks, well, I really don't want to go back to dancing. <laughs> like, like, you know, there's that club at the end of Robertson, you know, near Venice. Oh, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, and I don't want to work there anymore. I just find it so degrading. Okay, good. Let the team medic laughed at that. So he, well, I just, okay, I, okay. It's just like I'm really tired of doing this for like you know bachelorette parties. And I, I'm tired of jumping out of cakes. I'm tired of being exploited. I'm tired of like playing firemen and police officers and right. you know and the, the whole shebang from the village people. Yeah, and those like sorority the cowboy, parties are really yeah, the sorority humiliating. I am so tired. I do not want to go back to dancing. I thought. I'm going to place my trust in Hashem. I'm just going to study Torah all day and teach Torah, and Hashem will provide. So, and, that's he, and he, came, he came through tonight. Look at that. Came through. Look at this. You, you, you know, you want to like do your, your Torah talks with perhaps you figure, okay, this is a waste of my time. I should be out and making, making a living. You should be dancing. You should be, you know, sorority you come, over your ha come over to my house. The guy does nothing except tell stupid, dumb stories, right? Does he Give Torah. No, yeah, whatever, right? You know, like, let's be honest here. What does the guy, what does the guy add to this show? He just sits there, you know, tells us about, like, you know... His, I hate he, women. <laughs> he hates women, and he tells us about his, uh, his sexual encounters for the last five years, right? And for that, I hand the guy two checks. <laughs> Thank <Baruch Hashem. laughs> And the guy's like, okay. And then we go back to fighting for the rest of the month. <laughs> but the thing is, he's got to keep coming back if he wants those checks, right? So, by the way, by the way, one of the people who, who gave you uh, the, one of those checks, it's not D-Medic, it's the other one that I had you? Mm -hmm. The person said, just be yourself. They're paying you to be yourself. I said, I don't ever want to tell him that. Oh, they want me to be myself. They want you to be yourself. Oh, okay, well then let me tell you how it really is. So I've been holding back for the last 45 minutes, like thinking, oh, the rabbi, he doesn't like my sex stories. And, and this is a Torah show, I really shouldn't you know, engage in nibble, nibble pet. 
Is that the yeah, one? you get two minutes. Go ahead. You know, shouldn't shoot your wad. Go for it. Cuss for sure. You know, I shouldn't engage in any you know slutty uh, yeah. slutty talk. But I had my own Anthony Weiner moment, and uh, um, this woman solicited the peck from me. This was uh, twelve years ago. Like it was Tisha Bob. It was breaking the Tisha Bob fast. I was at this fine kosher establishment. This woman I knew was a few years older. She said, "Hey, you know, I got this woman and." She told me, I'm just looking for someone to tell me I'm pretty. Right. And to hold me. So she immediately thought of me. So. Speed the story up. So she set me up with this woman, and, uh, and uh, we're, we're, I'm chatting with this woman on AOL, and. Uh, she, Speed it up. She says to me, hey, you're a breast man. So I'm thinking, I'm a poor man. <laughs> but I say, you know, I don't want to hurt her feelings. I say, yeah. And so she sends me a picture of her on a low cut top. And I thought, Nice, and then she said, "Send me a picture of your card." It's like, "Hus for sure." Please, I'm a foreigner. I totally, that's totally out. I don't want to. How do you know it was a woman? It could have been an FBI agent. You know, I, I like, could tell. It or it could have been like an eight-year-old kid. I got like movie. intuition, <laughs> and All right. and I said, "No way!" Like, I'm not going to shame, degrade my conversion to Orthodox Judaism. The only place for this kind of, you know, exchange is within marriage. And then she said, "Show it to me." So I said. Oh, I do have a digital camera, and but I said I'm not going to show you it unsheathed. You know that'd be unholy. I'll just like, you know, I'll leave my shorts on, and you can. Just oh, like, that's just like Wiener. Yeah, this you can, one must have hit home. You can see the outline. Oh my God, this is just like you Wiener. You can see the outline. Okay. And so I took the photo, and then I had to upload it to my computer, and then I had to email it to her, and like this could come back to haunt me if I run for political office. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like after we. Hooked up a few times, she said, Oh, I want you to get an HIV test. And I said, Okay, so I went and like, showed out 75 bucks. That's a sore spot for the two of us. I, I, I showed out 75 bucks, <laughs> you know, of course I was negative, uh -huh. and, but she never had sex with me again, so like, I feel totally ripped off. <laughs> she should have to pay for the test. Exactly, she offered to. She said she would, but then I did it, and I didn't want to say, Hey, now, you know, 75 bucks, but so. Let that story be a warning to you kids, because it's so easy. So it's to, so important. So easy to start <laughs> sending off text, you know, pictures of your private parts, and it's really, it's humiliating. You know what? You know what bothered me about that wiener thing? The, the I don't have a problem with the guy. I see. I, I hate the guy. Okay, wait, wait. One thing at a time. You said, oh, that I couldn't run for public office because this woman would come out of the woodwork with a picture of my cock. And you know what? I would vote for you because I don't care about the stuff in your dirty laundry. I really but if it was only four inches long. Okay, that would be a disgrace to have my, my representative only have a four inch long cut. No, um, no, but seriously, I don't care about your private life. You know, I don't really care who you're banging. And this, this applies to all of them. If they cheat on their wife, that's between them and their wife. What I can't stand and I will not tolerate is when a guy gets up on camera and talks to me and lies to my face. That I can't handle. Because once you do that, then I don't believe anything you ever say. Whether it's on the congressional floor, it's in a press conference, whatever, I, I, I tune it out. Every time Obama speaks, I try to tune him out. Clinton speaks, I tune him out. Because these are pathological liars. And once, once you get caught lying, and once it's been like shown out there, why should I believe any time you listen to them. I always, uh, anybody who listens to somebody and they say, oh, Jerry Brown got caught lying about lying. Remember when he was running? Oh, well, anyways. But that's my problem. So I have my problem with Wiener is, you know, he, he you know, he, he, he cheats on his wife. He tweets, the, he, okay, it's all improper. That's for somebody else to sort out. It's not my business. I don't care. What I cared about was when he lied. Day after day, he had an 11-hour press conference at one point, and he told us all how we're all liars, and we're all, you know, Breitbart is, you know, some terrible guy. And, and it just went on, and he maligned everybody, just so Clinton-esque. Blame everybody else. Trash everybody else's good name. But you don't have the balls to just come out and admit it from day one. Because you know what? America is going to forgive you no matter what. They forgave Tiger, uh, what's his name? Tiger Woods. Wood. They forgave uh, the guy with the dogs. What's that guy's name? Michael Bill Vick. My Michael Vick, no, the other dogs. Michael Vick, right? They'll forgive you for anything in this country. It doesn't matter. You know, just tell the truth. Don't lie to us. I can't stand 
stand it when they lie. Now, the thing that really pissed me off about this whole thing, why don't I know what pissed me off? I've been in the hospital last week, by the way. Henry asked how my balls and my, my hand is doing, right? Nobody yeah. else asked, by the way. Thank you, Henry. Um, 